video in the series breaking down the human cells unit and this time we're going to look at cell differentiation again from key area 1.1 all about cell division and differentiation part of the higher human biology so first of what do we mean by differentiation so this is the process by which cells come to be specialised. Okay. From the genetic stem cell to any one of the specialised cells that make up the human body. Things like muscle, like immune cells, nervous cells, blood cells, etc. So to understand how this process works, I think it's key to remember that every single cell has access to the entire DNA molecules, all of the genes that make up a human. But they're not going to use all of those genes, they're only going to express, switch on, i.e. make a protein from ones that are relevant to them. So a muscle cell is only going to make genes that make proteins that make a muscle a muscle and ignore the ones that would be, say, relevant to a nerve cell. So switch on what they need, ignore everything else. That's then what allows them to carry out these specialised functions to make the proteins that they need, and that allows them to do their day-to-day -day role within the body. So looking at the stem cells, there are different types. And one of these being your embryonic stem cells. So embryonic stem cells come from very early on in development. And these are the ones that have the greatest variety or the most options to which type of specialised cells they can ultimately differentiate into. So because they have all these possibilities, they can become any cell type. We would describe them as being pluripotent. So that's a really key term for you. Pluripotent cells can become or differentiate into any cell type. So because they can switch on any one of the genes, they haven't committed to a particular pathway, that means they can still ultimately differentiate into any type of cell. They switch on the ones that they need, leave the other ones switched off, so become specialised. But in their embryonic form, they have yet to commit to a particular pathway. Thus, they are pluripotent, have all options still available. Our other type are our tissue stem cells. You may also see them referred to somatic or adult stem cells. And these are the ones that are involved whenever you're growing, whenever you're repairing damage around your tissue, so the renewal after the daily wear and tear. So it's about making more cells for that tissue type. So these ones are a lot more limited compared to your embryonic. So it's only a certain number of cells that they can specialise into. Thus, this time we use the term multipotent. Okay. Another key term meaning there's a more limited number of cells that can specialise into. So here they're limited into specialising into cells that are found in the same location. A good example is to look at the stem cells found within the bone marrow. Bone marrow is where all of your blood cells are produced red blood cells, platelets, phagocytes and lymphocytes which are white blood cells. So the tissue stem cells can still differentiate into any one of those different blood cells but they couldn't become a nervous or a muscle cell for example. So because they've got more limited options they are multi-potent. Uh, so I hope that's helped you to understand the process of differentiation or specialisation, the two types of stem cells uh, and what cells they can specialise into.
So let's finish by practicing some past paper questions. Remember, if you're doing a unit by unit approach, you won't have the multiple choice, but still good for practice of the knowledge. So here is question one. Each type of human cell has a different structure and function because A, they contain different genes. B, different genes are expressed in each. C, some genes are lost during differentiation. Or D, some genes are gained during differentiation. Pause the video and select your answer. So the correct answer here is B. Different genes are expressed in each. The difference in a muscle and a nerve cell is the protein that they produce. To do that, they both have the same DNA molecule, all the same genes, but only express, i.e. build proteins from the ones that are relevant to that cell type. They don't contain different genes. They don't lose or gain different genes. They simply use or express those which are relevant. Uh, let's try another. So which row in this table shows the type of stem cell that has the potential to form the greatest variety of specialised cells? Pause the video, select your answer. Correct answer this time is C. Start with the type of stem cell that has the greatest variety available to it. So we said the embryonic are pluripotent, meaning they can become anything at all, whereas tissue are multipotent, therefore a little, little bit more limited. So we can rule out B and D because it has to be embryonic. They have the most options. Second, we're looking at the state of differentiation. Now, if they were already differentiated, that would mean they've already begun this process of specialising. Therefore, to have the greatest variety, i.e. the most options, then these embryonic stem cells must be undifferentiated. Uh, and finally, let's try a restricted response style question. So the human body contains many specialised cells, all of which are developed from embryonic stem cells. And here we have examples of nerve cells, liver cells and cardiac muscle cells. If you were asked to first name the process by which a stem cell develops into a specialised body cell, and then explain how this process occurs. Pause the video, write down or come up with your answer. So for this one, first off, the process, just looking for you to state the key term, which is differentiation. Okay. Process by which a stem cell develops into a specialised body cell. Okay. Second part, explain. This is now looking for a little bit more detail about how that process works. Okay. So. Cells specialise to differentiate by only producing proteins from the relevant genes. So long as you get to that idea of selecting or using these particular genes, then you should pick up the mark. So only the genes for producing proteins or characteristics for that type of cell are expressed or switched on. Uh, so again, I hope this has helped you break down the key area, further to your understanding of differentiation, and if you'd like to leave any comments or questions, feel free to do so.